Warning, this content may be disturbing to some audiences. Subscribe. If you dare. I was about 13 when my father told me he only married my mother because of me and I was the cause of all of his problems. Hey everybody, welcome to, an Ectost. People ask Reddit. What were some times when you died inside? Number 1. Commenter. In the 7th grade, I got my back to school clothes. For some reason, I thought yellow pants and a yellow Hawaiian shirt looked awesome. I was excited to wear this new outfit. We were not wealthy, so having new clothes like this was a big deal for me. Sitting in my English class I received a note. It said are you the mustard man? And was signed by every person in the effing dot class and as I read it, they all burst out in laughter. All of them. It's a moment in life where you have to laugh or cry and either way you die inside. I chose to laugh. Kids are cruel. Person B. I have always been kind of into styling my own outfits and not wanting to fit in with the crowd. One day when I was maybe 14 and felt a little more confident than the other days, I decided to wear emo a super cool and hip light pink white miniskirt plus t-shirt set to my dancing class. And was so ready to win the dance floor with it because it was something that I had really wanted to wear, but didn't have the courage before. When I walked into the class, everybody, even my dancing teacher who is kindest of them all, laughed and made a comment, what a lamb costume I was wearing. Of course my outside laughed along but my inside was confused about what I did wrong and why I felt guilty to express myself. To say the least, the incident was referred to many times later, and I got the set out of my closet right away. Funny to think about but those moments actually have a big impact on our personality and security when you are an unsettled teenager who is still shaping the insights about the world for themselves. I sure do still feel a little oppressed and I've maybe even developed my insecurity to wear skirts and dresses from this, or well it was one part of the causes. Hope you are Gucci and feel the freedom to wear whatever you love no matter what the artificialized society tells you to wear say or do. Number 2. Commenter. When I was 18 and at a carnival with a group of people I knew from school, including my longtime crush. At some point, people started dropping off from the group, going on rides, getting food, that kind of stuff. Eventually, it was only me, my crush and my little sister, little as in almost 16. I kept waiting for her to leave, too, to go find some of her friends or whatever. After hanging out together for another 15 or so minutes, it slowly dawned on me that it wasn't him and me waiting for her to leave, but them waiting for me to leave. They shortly after became a couple for a few months. It later turned out that they got to know each other at my 18th birthday party two months prior, they never met before. When my sister got back later that evening she told me that and said you don't mind do you? I did mind, very much. Person B. I was 14 and a virgin. Dating this cute guy I had a major crush on for months. Well one day at home, I'm about to go out and needed a hair tie. I knock on my older sister's door and start to open while asking for the hair tie. Her and my boyfriend are literally going at it, in broad daylight in her bed. I start crying and asking why. He looks dead in my eyes and says well she would and you wouldn't so. Sorry? She just lays there and smiles, I say if you both and spit on them run downstairs and almost out the door and my dad, who is sitting at the computer asks what's wrong. I say why don't you guys upstairs and see dad. I ran outside and heard a lot of yelling and the asshole comes running out with no clothes on and hightails it away. That was just the beginning. My sister did this a few more times, hit on my first husband and almost all my boyfriends. My current husband, you betcha, she sexted him and tried to sleep with him. I haven't spoken to her in about three years. Number 3. Commenter. When my dad told me he was obligated to love me, but he didn't have to like me. I was 10. And I was absolutely crushed. Person B. Veil, looks like we have the same dad. I was about the same age when I was told this. 30 years later and I haven't forgotten. The only good thing to be said about being treated this way is that I'm very cognizant of what I say to my daughter. Words have a lasting impact. Person C. I was about 13 when my father told me he only married my mother because of me and I was the cause of all of his problems. Just threw that out there as he dropped me off for soccer practice. The first of many similar occurrences. And now, 16 years later, he constantly boo-boos and wonders why I won't speak to him. Number 4. I received a set of boxes in the mail with no return address on a Monday morning. When I opened the boxes I started noticing stuff that is my mom's, her handwriting on notes, this seems to be some sort of care package from my mom. Was in college at the time. As I opened more, there were all these documents. 
I was confused, then I found the note. My mom committed suicide but planned it all out. She sent me a list of things to take care of now that she's gone. Now I hate getting packages. Seemed like almost a dream really. Got the boxes, found the note, started getting phone calls from phone numbers with my hometown area code, which were police calling me to inform me of what they had found all within an hour of getting the packages. I had a weird feeling the whole weekend because my mom wouldn't answer her phone and that wasn't her style, but I figured I'd wait till Monday and call again. Inside one of the packages I received was her cell phone, I think she couldn't have done it if she had kept it around her. So she sent it. We still can't get into the phone because we don't know the password and Apple won't unlock it. Number 5. Commenter. I had a customer who was holding and examining an awkward, fragile, and expensive item with one hand. I asked her to please hold it with two. She turned to look at me. She only had one arm. Person B. I help coordinate Medicaid transportation to appointments. Had a really rude client on the phone yelling that his ride wasn't there. I put him on hold, called the driver. He is sitting out front. I switch back over, the client is still yelling. I said, sir. Just look outside, he's right there. It had been a bad day, and I learned my lesson from this, please keep that in mind. He says, I can't, I'm blind. Sure as shit, his file says blind. Now I don't lose my temper on the phone. Person C. Similar to this, I was working at an arcade one summer. I'm fixing a machine so I'm kneeling with my head inside. I get whacked with something, and it feels like a stick. I'm angry and I say watch where you're going. Pull my head out to find a blind kid with a walking stick. So politely he responds I'm so sorry. Damn that made me feel terrible. Person D. I was in a school camp as a supervisor, the kids had just arrived and were throwing a ball around and one girl missed an easy catch. I'd been joking around with all of them so I called out two hands for beginners. Yep, missing her left arm below the elbow. I talked to her later, she didn't know which was funnier, my comment, which she loved as most people tiptoe around her missing arm, or the look on my face as I realized what I said. Cool kid. Person E. I worked at a dive center, and we were packing up the gear off a boat that had just come back in. I just washed off a bunch of fins and was trying to find owners and couldn't find a second fin to the last one in that bundle. Me being a bit of a joker, aka asshole, I walked around asking who our mermaid was. Turns out a friend of the manager's was up diving and he did not have one leg. I could have very easily curled up and never been seen again. Thankfully he thought it was hilarious. Person F. I had a customer man picking some furniture up for another customer, also a man. The guy picking it up hands me both their id cards, and they look very similar, share last names, and are just a few years apart. So as to keep our conversation up I said something like helping your brother move. His smile faded and he snatched the ids from my hand. No. He's my husband, he said, grabbed his stuff and left. Twas awkward. Person G. Placing a tattoo stencil on a girl's back. I'm checking if it's placed properly, centered slash level etc, and she's slouching as shit so I can't tell. So I say alright stand up nice and straight, square shoulders for me, and she replies I have scoliosis. She was actually hella chill about it and had a laugh, all the while I wanted the ground to swallow me. Person H. Had something similar happen to me. Went to go talk to a patient who had recently had a stroke. Went in the room and introduced myself and went to shake their hand, only to realize their right size was disabled and they had a hard time getting their hand up to shake mine. I'd already committed to the handshake so I had to awkwardly keep my hand out until they used their other hand to pull up their right hand to shake mine. Yeah. I F on out of there pretty quick. Number 6. Commenter. I found a resident at my work, CNA, crying and when asked what was wrong he responded I have baby brains. For some context, I work at a traumatic brain injury center. For these types of people, this is their permanent home. And coming from someone who is usually caught in a three-sentence loop, the self-realization was something I didn't think he was capable of. I initially thought no 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 but replied with something like hey that's not the case you're a full-grown man and proceeded to breathe with him to calm him down. It ended with us laughing and him calling me a pretty cool dude dude. Person B. I have a cousin with autism. He's typically a pretty happy guy, but every once in a while he'll recognize that he's different and say something like I'm never gonna get married in a defeated tone. Really pulls on the heartstrings and makes you want to folk on out of here. Person C. I was at a psych place for about a week and there was a woman there who had had a stroke and busted her head. 
Every day she would ask where her kids were and completely freak out. They would have to explain that she had been there for 50 days, her mom had her kids, and she had a brain injury. It was heartbreaking. Number 7. This happened in my high school theater class. As a finale project, we and a partner, if we wanted, were to choose a song slash monologue slash dialogue to perform. I had a dear friend Emma, with a brave heart. She chose the song All That Jazz from the musical Chicago, which is a hard song even for seasoned performers. In Emma's 16 years of life no one had told her she was tone deaf, nor had she figured it out for herself. You could feel how uncomfortable everyone was when Emma started to sing. Luckily, we weren't a bunch of assholes and politely tried to sit through it. We were quite close-knit, and mainly just proud to see our friends perform. Everyone had chosen their favorites and were so excited. So, we were painfully letting Emma sing her way through the song, until... Cue Miss Ellen. She was hired as a front office person. She answered the phone, took care of attendants and kids whose parents called them sick, etc. It was her dream, however, to be in the performing arts. So, stupidly, our theater teacher took on Ms. Ellen as an assistant director, none of us liked her, or this idea. After the first verse, Ms. Ellen began to sing the correct-ish pitch over Emma. I was horrified. She immediately lost all confidence she had and hurried her way through the rest of the song. The second-hand embarrassment was so tangible it was heartbreaking. Number 8. One night after going to a concert with one of my friends and I dropped him off at his house, as he was getting out of the car, he started looking for something. When I asked him what he was looking for, he said, I think I lost my weed, he had about a half an eighth left in a baggie, and gave up after looking around a bit, concluding he lost it at the show. Cut to 10 minutes later, and I, on the way home, got pulled over for not coming to a full stop at a stop sign. As the cop approached the car, the thought of my friend's lost bag crossed my mind. The cop went through the usual routine, asked for my license and registration, asked where I was that evening, have I had anything to drink, is there anything in the car he needed to know about. I answered everything flawlessly, but then as he's standing there, I see something catch his eyes as he's looking in, and he shined a flashlight inside on it, and asked, what's that? I died inside when I looked over and saw, perfectly framed in the spotlight, my friend's bag of weed on the passenger side floor, how he didn't find it while looking around I'll never understand. Somehow, I was able to articulate my case that it wasn't my weed but my dumbass friends well enough that he took pity on me and just confiscated it, and let me off with a warning for that, plus a $70 ticket for the stop sign. Make sure to share your personal story in the comments below and have the opportunity to be featured in a future video. Also, if you like these topics don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to continue seeing more content like this every day. See you next time.